8pm guys, uh, as Pashy Maniac says, and we are here, we are live, uh, so good evening and welcome to the stream. Um, we'll make a start in a few minutes, just uh, give people a chance to join. Um, hopefully uh, hopefully things will pick up quite quickly. Uh, and there's Anarchy as well, here we go, yep. <coughs> uh, we've also got uh, George in the chat and uh, Cam won Sama. I apologise if I'm pronouncing that wrong. So we'll give it a few minutes. We'll see how many people join. Tronic as well. Good evening, good sir. Good to see you, my dude. Uh, Esports or keyboards? What to choose? What to choose? Why not both? You can multi-stream these days, multicast. Um, so I think that's perfectly accessible. And um, we've got Elmo as well and Luna Twix as well. Good evening, guys. Good to see you. Uh, 159 says this channel isn't esports. Well, it could be. I could, I could play a video game on the screen behind you, and you could kind of watch that. It'd be crap, but I could do that. Uh, someone has my nick says hey, hey. Um, we'll see how we get on. Um, today we are building the second half of the J01, which is my keyboard that we built last week. Uh, this week we'll be building it with red holly pandas and a brass plate. Um, and as you can see, I've already pre-mounted the gaskets, but I'll talk through why I've already done that uh, shortly and explain exactly uh, what's going on with the J01 at the minute. Um, <laughs> Uh, Passion Maniac is saying this is a keyboard stream. Yeah, keyboards or esports. You can always watch on the VODs later on for either, I suspect, so uh, it shouldn't make too much difference which you pick. Um, hopefully the bottle ping on uh, on Discord soon. Um, sorry, I'm just getting a ton of messages. We'll see, uh, we'll see how that goes. Okay. Uh, and we'll see who else we get in chat as well. So, could be a good day. I hope your your days uh, are going just fine as well, guys. I hope you're all having a lovely Sunday. Uh, you can probably hear the storm we've got going on in the background. We did have hail about five minutes before we started, uh, and it was absolutely pounding against the glass. And I thought, if that carries on, I'm not going to stream tonight. So, I do hope that the uh, the weather stays relatively kind for us this evening, um, and that way we can uh, we can get the stream done. Uh, if not, I'll just have to build it off stream and send a lot of pictures. Okay. Uh, Alchemist as well says good evening. Uh, evening, Alchemist. Oh, and uh, Passion Maniac as well with the sub. Thank you very much for that. I really appreciate that. Um, oh, it was gifted by 159. Sorry. Uh, thank you very much, 159. We uh, we really appreciate that. And thank you again for all the support. Um, it really is nice to see. Thank you. You should definitely watch Jay over esports. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Rope says hello, hello. Good to see you. Um, okay. So when we build today, we are going to be building with GMK screen stamps as nearly always. Uh, again, these were supplied by Fax. I don't know if Fax is watching, but if he is, good evening, good sir. Um, Fax is kind of like a reseller in the EU for uh, Cherry and GMK stabilizers, so I use him for those. Um, as always, top quality. Red Holy Pandas, we have got a special one for the space. These are 72 gram progressive springs from Sprit in these, and the space bar's got 100 gram uh, spring in it as well. Uh, again, Sprit spring, but slightly different. So we're gonna be building with those uh, into the brass plate. Um, I'll show you guys this now. So this is the brass plate, and as you can see, it's got the isolation mount gaskets already pre-fitted. Little bit of glue there uh, and then under the underside I'll show you this so it will work um, but I've had to trim down some of the internals to, to get it to work uh, based off the fact that I only had one set of gaskets and the gasket was used on the previous build the previous week um, so the idea is that the gasket uh, all around this edge basically lifts it off of the case um, and we use a compression ratio against that to do so the revised non prototype version of this will have basically an even edge that will be cut here and not hand cut like you can see this is all kind of a little bit jagged and not quite right the final version will all be nice and smooth and uh, designed for that the reason this one's like this is because basically I had it going in between all of the switches and I had to cut that out so yeah so there we go that's what we're gonna build today uh, a new PCB I have got five or six of these and um, so this is identical to the previous one um, so as you can see this is all been hand soldered by Martin so Martin if you're watching thank you very much dude I really appreciate your help uh, you can see his logo just up here, martin.dk. Go check him out, guys, if you're interested in PCB stuff. Um, so we'll be building that today. Um, basically, 
I want to see what the difference is between the carbon fiber plate with the linear switches that we built last week and what the difference is with the tactile and brass plate. So I'm expecting there to be some sound differentiation and we'll build the board up later on. It's in parts at the side and we'll bring that on later on. Um, and just see how well the theory works. It works for linears. Does it work for tactiles as well? And does it work for brass over carbon fiber? So it's a bit of a test today. Again, I'm a little bit nervous as to how this is going to sound and how it's going to feel. But uh, I'm broadly confident it's going to be just as nice as the linear board. Uh, 159 uh, says, oh yeah, just should definitely watch me. Yeah. If those switches are tight, then Jay will have calluses on his thumbs just like eSports. Yeah. So I've already tried test fitting one of these switches in and it was a right pain. I'll be honest, it did hurt my thumb a little bit. So the plan today is absolutely going to be get the switches in the plate first, then align it to the PCB. Luckily, these switches are uh, plate mount. They're not PCB mount. They don't have the extra legs at the side. So they should be easier to line up to the PCB and easier to push in that way. I hope. Now, these are tactiles. They're Halo clear stems uh, in Panda Yok red housings. Um, and they have been looped with Crytox 106 on the springs and on the stem and the case. So hopefully they'll feel just nice. Well, they feel nice out of the out of the board now. So yeah, we'll see. Um, Straight Classy says hi, AJ and Glue. Oh, Glue, Glue's here. Glue, my dude. We need to have a catch up and a chat again soon. We need to get a couple of beers in and sit down and have a good catch up. Um, Alchemist says when Bledin put them in his tofu, he had to push it in so hard that one of the kale sockets pinged out of the bottom. Ouch. That sounds painful. Straight Classy says, you building my future board. Uh, if you join the mini prototype round, then uh, yeah, I'm building a board that you may one day own. I'm hoping that the prices are going to be reasonable for that. I have sent off for quotes uh, for 10 units of the prototype. Um, and it's, it's a little bit cheaper than the single unit was. Well, significantly cheaper, but it's still not going to be a cheap board. Um, I was hoping to keep it around $400, but I don't think I'm going to be able to. I'm just looking at the prices that have come back. Um, but it, uh, that's something I'll go through with uh, when, I, when I get back off holiday next week. I'm going to set up a, just a Discord server with um, or a channel on Top Clack. I don't, I'm not sure yet which. Uh, and just invite the 40 or so people that have expressed interest in joining the 10 spot prior to group buy um, and see if everyone's broadly comfortable with the price. Some people will drop out at that point. I know they will. Whoever remains, as long as it's 10, then we'll progress and we'll uh, we'll get the uh, we'll get the prototypes made up. That's the plan. So wait for a couple of quotes back though. I do need quotes for PCBs um, and quotes for gaskets and quotes for what was the other thing I was waiting for? All plates. So as soon as I get all of those back, so at the minute I've got a quote for the top case, the bottom case, the pen rail, and the midsection. And I need PCBs, uh, gaskets, uh, or screws and bolts. So the same custom ones I had made here, um, and the plates as well. So I'm probably only going to order one plate type. Um, so whoever does join will, will only order one. <laughs> Geo says I'm budgeting minimum of $600 shipped. I, I'd like to think I can keep it under $600 shipped. I'd like to think so. I was hoping to get it $400 plus shipping. So if I can't do it within another $200, I'd be surprised. Um, the other option is it does significantly drop in price. If I jump up to 25, it looks nearly $100 off the cost um, per unit, which is you know a lot. So there may be there may be an option to, to go for 25, although I don't really want to do a group buy for that big. It's not really a proto round at 25 units, it's an actual group buy, uh, and that means there's a lot more stringency to uphold, whereas with 10, and everyone knows it's a prototype, you know, you kind of get what you get, um, and people are broadly more accepting of that. So lots of ups and downs. I'm going to consider it while I'm on holiday, and we'll see how that is when I get back. Um, the Discord bot is taking its time to ping, so we'll start shortly. Um, Starson says, I've got money for you, Jay. I hope so, dude. I hope so. Someone's going to have to. Someone's going to have to. <clears throat> okay, why is this bot not pinging? It is taking its time today. It's taking its time. Um, but anyway, as I say, we will be building it with these today. Um, again, normal silicone lube for the stabilizers. We'll be do using the same method as I always use for my stabilizers. We're popping it in the board. We'll do a sound test at the end. Uh, we're going to be putting GMK Space Cadet on this set. I don't know why, just because the Red Samurai set's just up here. 
that uh, that board there has got the uh, the red samurai and carbon fiber plate that I pulled out earlier on. So we'll be using Space Cadet, uh, and which so a few people heard my plight about looking for uh, uh, for the UK keys for this. So many thanks to um, uh, ISO Returns for sending me these. Um, many thanks to Wodan for sending me these, and many thanks to Mastrop. Was any of these? So I have got like three UK kits now, um, or, and the full international kit. But thanks to everyone that, that sent them, I do appreciate that. Um, yeah. So uh, Zambon one as well says another J one. It's the same board, uh, just using a different plate and combination type Zambu. So yeah, that's uh, that's the plan. Um, with <laughs> what I called yesterday, uh, uh, did I call them Hamondas? Uh, just because I look like Hamon. Um, so yeah. Uh, We'll see how it goes, but yeah, good another build today, um, and we'll see how it sounds with this particular variation of switch and plate. I'm expecting it to sound a little bit deeper, a little bit thockier, rather than the clacky version we had previously. Uh, one thing that baffles me is how some keycap sets are £100. Um, some of those sets are way over that. Um, so Zambamundi, you can see he runs a lot of key sets through Mastrop and other vendors in the uh, EU and some of the prices can get significantly more than that for GMK sets. Um, it's just one of those things, that's the prices and you know there's all the shipping and manufacturing costs and everything else that goes into it. I know Zambamundi is working on different layouts and different base kit sets to try and get that price down. A lot of used sets will be maybe in the region of £100 or $130 for GMK sets. Uh, the prices can go up significantly. I've seen Olivia, GMK Olivia sell for $300 plus, which is like 245 quid or something like that. So some of the prices can go up significantly higher um, on GMK. Uh, as Almo says, if you look at some of the SA sets, some of the old ones, such as the um, Space Cadet sets or the SA Symbiosis, they can go significantly higher, four or five hundred dollars, and I have seen SA uh, Retro go for over five hundred dollars as well. So I'd like to think the price is going to come down a little bit if it gets rerun, which is being talked about. Um, so we'll see how that goes. We'll see how it goes. That being said, in terms of the prices, I do think that when you look and consider the price of a GMK set, what you get is generally pretty good. Um, you can look at Hamon, that was down to 109, or did it? I'm not even sure. It might have even made the 99 pound, uh, 99 dollar price bracket. Um, some of the other sets that have run recently, uh, Jim K. Calm Depths, that had a massive base kit for $125. So, you know, these things can happen. These things can happen. Things can come down and prices can drop. But at the end of the day, the prices are fair for the product you get is my gut feel uh, broadly. Some sets are a little bit more expensive than others, but broadly across the range of GMK, the prices are there. It's a niche hobby. They're not mass produced. They're not making thousands and thousands of these sets. They're only making a couple of hundred for most of them. Uh, it's not always that you get a bento set or a laser set where it makes more than a thousand kits. So I think the prices are pretty much fair for where they are. Um, if you want to see real outrage in the community, I think when the Holy Panda you know, prices were were going stupidly high. That was uh, that was kind of when uh, when things were out of price a lot. I think. Um, Kyle says evening all. Good evening. Nice to see you, Kyle. Excuse me. I do need a drink. I'm losing my voice a little bit. Okay. Still no bot ping. It's taking forever. Um, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why it's taking this long to ping. As soon as it does ping, we'll make a start um, and, and start to build properly. Uh, but we are still growing. I think there's 32 people watching now, it says. So that's not too bad. That's not too bad. But 13 minutes in and no bot ping. Yeah. Gio, we need to fix this bot. We need to get a better bot. <laughs> we need to get Nightbot to sort this out. There it goes. Oh, there it is. Yeah, right. Okay. It literally just popped up. There we go. There we go. Yeah, I think the uh, the timing's probably uh, confused a lot of people because the time in America has changed already with the clocks going back and it hasn't changed here in the UK so it's actually an hour earlier for everyone else um, in the e well, it's an hour early for everyone in the US compared to what it was last week when I streamed it'll change here in about three weeks time uh, so we change at the end of uh, end of March the so 29th of March I think it is this year um, so yeah so we'll see <clears throat> Um, <clears throat> Streambot dead. Elmo said, "Yeah, I say I'm just seeing the chat now." Uh, Jane Saints hello, says, "Hello, good sir. Hello, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are." Uh, and Necro Woman as well. Good, good evening. Um, 
I think you're an hour ahead of me even. It's 8 o'clock here. I think it's 9 o'clock um, where uh, Jay Saints and Necro Woman are. So uh, good evening, folks. Um, but anyway, just to recap, we are building the J01 Mark II. So instead of using carbon fiber plate and ink switches today, we're going to use holy red pandas and a brass plate. Um, we're going to be using the same gaskets. I've had to cut them out of the old board and re glue them onto this board. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, and I'll just talk you through how I've done that uh, in a short while as well. Um, and then we'll carry on with the rest of the build. So yeah, there we go. So in terms of the uh, the gaskets, uh, just to give you a bit of a recap with what I've done. So last week when we built the uh, the carbon fiber plate, um, what we had was uh, was bars that went across this area and across this area. One of the design changes I've made with uh, with Teslatron to the final plate design uh, and case design is and the gasket design is that those won't be needed because they don't really add any value. The idea is that it's thicker around here and it's overlaid over the edge of the plate. So as you can see it's thicker on this side as the gasket than it is on the other side. The reason for that is so that the plate lives directly in the middle of the two gasket layers. And on this side, this 5mm edge or thicker that's all the way around, that is enough to lift it off of the bottom of the case. So I have cut this out of the album, uh, and how this is bonded to the plate is just using some spray mount tape, uh, some spray glue type stuff. This is just for cards, so it's only a really temporary hold. It just holds it in place enough to actually maneuver it around and get it into the board correctly. Um, so it just makes it a little bit simpler and a little bit easier to do. Uh, just catch up with chat because it's gone a little bit mental since I started talking a minute ago. Um, uh, Mr. Evil Genius himself says, I've just noticed a rip and Jay's place. Yeah, it was a dead server. It was from my old streams. So, uh, oh, what's on my TV? Oh, just a like and subscribe message. Um, yeah, so um, uh, Jay's place was from my old streams. Now we've got Top Clack. The Top Clack channel is there. Jay's place is done. It's gone. Um, so, yeah, that's that's done. Sushimi so says, I am here, everyone stay calm. We're all calm, we're all good. Gio says, I was a one click away from muting for a sec, lol. <laughs> Necroman as well, good evening, good sir, good to see you. <clears throat> um, and then the guys are talking about muting each in Twitch chat. So that's what we've done to the gaskets. We've trimmed it out of the old board. I have only got one set for the prototype. Re-glued it back into here using the, uh, the spray man. So it's not a permanent glue, but it does bond the rubbers together quite well for the layers. And it does hold the plate in place as well because the layers are quite flexible. Uh, so it's just easier to build with that in place. When we do the uh, the final prototype run, that will not be needed because the uh, the layers will be uh, much easier to align with the PCB. And what I'll probably do is I'll probably just bond the two layers here together and then the plate will sit in the two layers. So as you can see now, it's kind of resting on this bottom layer and then this top layer just encompasses so it's a nice smooth finish just over the two, so the uh, the middle layer is as thick as the plate and then the plate sits in the recess. So I'll make sure that that's all sorted for any of the uh, the prototypes that we sell uh, and that we uh, we all combine in. Uh, Fax is here as well. Good evening, good sir. You, we are using your stabs again as always, so thank you very much for providing those for me. Um, and we're gonna crack straight on with the build. So the first thing we're gonna do is move the plate to one side, take out the stabilizers, and the first thing we're going to do is clip them. So as I've shown you before, guys, there is four legs on the base of the stabilizer. We're going to clip this corner off, and we're going to clip this corner off. Uh, those two legs there are going to be removed, and we're going to make sure that on the base of it, those nubbins that are sticking out are completely flush. So I'm going to take off one leg. I'm going to take off the other. And as you can see, we've taken off just in this corner, just in this corner, and now it's nice and flush on the bottom. So we're going to repeat that for all of the stabilizer inserts. Just two clips on each one. Uh, and, and Kami Sama says hello. Hello. Glad to have you watching, guys. And uh, well, it's a rare treat because we've got two mods in the chat today. Normally we don't have any on my streams on a Sunday because everyone's usually uh, asleep or it's the middle of the day. So thank you very much, boys, for uh, for being there today. That's a trippy mouse mat. Yeah, a friend made this for me um, just for Christmas uh, for uh, a secret Santa present. Uh, so Tidal, Josh, if you're watching, thank you very much for that. Uh, it was named after my old Twitch show before I joined Top Clank. Okay. So that's all six of these clips. 
There we go. Let's get rid of the clippings. And as you can see, these are all now nice and flush on the base, completely flush. There's no sticking out points. And you can see that both of the legs have now gone. So there we go. Oh, and Talisman Solutions is, uh, is donated 1,111 bits. So thank you very, very much. I really appreciate that, man. Really, really appreciate that. Uh, Gio says, last week, daughter was in town, not my fault. Yeah, whatever, whatever. You could have made it if you'd have wanted to. <laughs> Don't know I'm only winding them up. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to pop the stabilizer in the housing. And the way we do that is on one side of these, you've got two holes, as you can see there. That's the front. And then on the uh, housing itself, you can see that at the front, we've got uh, parts where the wire clips in. So what you want to do is align the two holes so that they're visible when you can see the wire clip. So you can see the two holes there and you can see the wire clips at the front. And once we've done that, we're gonna take the uh, the actual metal wire. We're gonna pop it through that front hole into the bottom hole, so into the second hole on the insert. And then we're gonna clip it into the front. And then we're just gonna repeat that across all of the parts. And there you go, you can see we've got one fully working stabilizer. Repeat that across the next two stabilizers. And then we shall start to lube these up. Uh, Talisman, uh, so 159 uh, drops one bit and uh, Talisman Solution uh, opens his lighter to thank him for it. Thank you very much for that 159. Um, I did then I got in a fight with Max and left. Oh, yes, you were here last week. I remember. I remember It wasn't a fight. It was a healthy discussion Have you ever had keyboard slabs which are too high for the space bar? Um, not in something I've built. No, no um, I haven't Is this a pre-built board that you've got Kami Sama or is it uh, something you've built yourself or? Because um, there are different types of stabilizer and different types of wires and boards that they're designed for so it depends on what you've what you've got that might be the issue but if you let us know we'll try and clarify that uh, and ISO returns is here as well uh, so Jay taking it super pro like a sex teacher in a ground school I'm not sure what that means I don't know what that means but I'll take it as a compliment I guess okay <clears throat> I'm gonna take it as a compliment that's all I'm going to do. So we are using dielectric grease here, which is safe for use on electronics components. Uh, we're just going to squeeze a moderate amount into the cap, um, which will give us all we need to use. We've got a clean brush. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a small amount on the brush. We're going to hold out the stabilizer. We're going to put lube on one side. We're going to flip that over. We're going to put lube on the other side. Just a nice thin layer. Let's just help it not get any plastic on plastic contact. We're going to take a nice blob of lube, put that in the back where we can see the wire. Try and push that all the way through. We're going to come around to the front of the stabilizer. We're going to take a nice blob again. We're going to follow the wire up into the stabilizer housing. Again, push it all the way through. What's left on the brush, we're just going to paint it around the front edge. Just make sure it covers where the wire touches the plastic. And then the final thing we're going to do is take a rice sized piece and just pop it on the underside of the stab, just like so. Should have enough lube left on the stabilizer to do the next side. So we've got enough to paint just on there. And then we'll turn that over. We'll paint on this side. Again, we're going to go into the back. It's a nice blob on the back. Try and push it all the way through. Go to the front. Another nice blob up into the stabilizer housing. Try and paint as much as we can in there. Paint on the front edge. Anywhere that could touch the plastic and the metal. Turn it over. And then a piece about the size of a grain of rice all on the underside and that's one done I'm just going to repeat that across the next ones um, 
I'm just going to try and catch it with chat whilst we do it. Uh, yes, that's a compliment. Thank you. Big compliment. I'll take that. Thank you. Uh, how do you clean your brushes? So I just clean them in isopropyl alcohol. They just get dunked in that after each stream. Um, left over my take the brush out, let it dry. That's pretty much it. Okay. Um, after using lubes that aren't water soluble. So the brushes that I use for lubes that aren't water soluble, because this is, this is dielectric grease, so of course it's water soluble. Um, but if I'm using lube that isn't water soluble, all I do is I wrap them in cling film and I use the same brush for that same lube every time. So the brushes are actually uh, kept separately for different lubes. Uh, and there's no point in cleaning them, is my view. I just have one brush per lube type. So I have one for, for example, for grade. 205 grade zero, uh, one for 105, one for 104, uh, one for 106, all of that kind of stuff. Just to keep uh, a unique brush for that lube and then wrap it in cling film so that it doesn't dry out the lube or let it run off or pick up any dirt or dust. Okay. Uh, Cammy Summers come back and he said, I built it myself and I found with the space bar to sit on the stabs. I have to push it so far down that the switch is also pressed down, if that makes sense. So I guess I got it wrong, the stabs are too low. If you have access to Discord, Cammy Summer, if you ping me, if you're on the top pack Discord, uh, which you can get by uh, typing in exclamation mark Discord, uh, that should bring up our Discord server, and you look at the top left, uh, if you send me a picture, you should be able to find me on there, just under J. Um, I will happily take a look and try and diagnose what's wrong with them. Uh, it will be after the stream before I get a chance to do that. Oh, there we go. Sashimi's so uh, pulling up the Discord server for you just there. Okay. Okay, so that's stabilizer number two done. And we're going to move on to the third and last one. Um, I saw says is you don't clean them, you store them labeled in a brush box. Pretty much, yeah. I've got a lube and brush box. Uh, so I've got, I'll show you guys what I've got here. So this is full of different lubes. The brushes in here are unused. Um, and then I've got a whole set of brushes that are, are used that are wrapped up as well. So lots of different lube types in there. <clears throat> Maybe they're plate mount stabs and you put them under the plate. Uh, it could be a number of different things. I really want to see a picture before I start trying to give uh, Kami Sam any kind of direction because I don't want to send them down the wrong path. But uh, a picture of how the stabilizers are in the board. Uh, and what key caps you're using as well would be really helpful for that diagnosis. Okay. Okay, almost in there. It's going to do the last side of this stabilizer. Oops. Helps when you don't drop them, Jay. Okay. Almost done on this stabilizer now, guys. And girls as well, of course. And there we go. That's all of the stabilizers now fully lubed up. Move that to one side, get that out of the way. <clears throat> um Simmons says I eat, so he's gonna ping me some pictures and I'll hopefully diagnose that. If we if you do send the pictures over, I'll show them on stream and people can see what I'm looking at and how we're uh, we're checking it out. Uh, Blimey Boy says, artists normally store their brushes coated in oil because it preserves bristles. So that sounds perfect. The other option is buy really cheap brushes and then throw them away and buy new ones, but that's a bit wasteful. Um, Jamos is here. Hey, baby. Um, uh, Talisman says, uh, Solution says, hello, uh, Sushimi, uh, and puts his lighter back up. Um, Steph Dev says, oh, hello there. Interesting channel. Well, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Uh, thank you for being here on a lovely Sunday evening. And then lots of talk about what's happening as well. So, yeah. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put the stabilizers into the three locations where we need them. Um, just trying to work out where we 
armor. So, yep, yeah, so we need one just here, which is the backspace stabilizer. And then we've got one just here, which is the ISO enter key. And then we're going to put the last one down here, which is for our spacebar. So they're all in place. Uh, the PCB on these is nice and tight. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to screw these in with some hex screws. So again, thank you very much to Fax for surprising, providing these with uh, some good quality hex screws. Again, you don't want to over tighten these, you just want to have them so it's just tight enough to hold the uh, stabilizer into the uh, into the PCB. Uh, if you do it over tight, you're gonna nip the PCB, crack the F bar for potentially damage some of the parts of the board. So it's always worthwhile to just take it steady. Oop, I think I might have got some pictures there. Someone's just tagged me in Discord anyway. We'll have a look at that in a second, see if it is. Okay, let's take a look at that picture. Uh, okay, so I'm just gonna share one of these pictures in chat. Let me just grab that link. And here you go, guys. So you guys can see what I'm looking at. Um, so that looks like your stabilizers are actually okay there from what I can see in the picture. Um, they look nicely lubed or relatively nicely lubed with a drier lube. They look to be in place. Um, I can't really tell from that picture what the issue is. Your space bar is on upside down in the first picture, which might be what you're referring to, but uh, it, the, the stabilizer looks okay in that picture that I can see there. I can't see anything wrong with it. Maybe if you try and get a close up of the one on the left, uh, where we, there's a bit of um, a bit more of a gap around the stabilizer, might be able to see a little bit more in that one. <clears throat> okay. Oh, lots been happening in uh, chat as well. So uh, Talisman Solutions has gifted a tier one sub to Steph. Uh, so thank you very much for that. Uh, has anyone ever tried a Cherry Silent Reds? Yes. Uh, I actually have a different type of silent switch in this keyboard. This is a Helio switch. Um, if I'm gonna use any silent switch. I prefer Helio to anything else, but silent reds are not a bad choice. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's definitely something you can you can use. Um, there's better choices. <sighs> My main question would be, why do you want a silent switch? Um, lots of switches can be very quiet, and lots of buds can be very quiet without using a silent switch. So my main question would be, why, why are you thinking a silent switch? Um, Fax is a subscriber to Twitch Prime. I subscribed for two months now, coming on one, one month three. And he said, Stabs for life. Thank you very much, Fax. I really appreciate that. I genuinely do. Thank you very much for the support. Uh, Face Shifter says, I have. They're a little too light for me. Much prefer silent blacks. Yeah, that's fair. It depends on what you're wanting a silent switch for. The, the weight of the switch doesn't matter too much because you can always change the springs or you know buy a heavier version. Um, if I was going to go for a silent switch, that would be a Helio, uh, which, as I say, I have in my wife's board, which is right here. I've got some lube on the end key, so I have to clean that later on. So there we go. So that's the stabilizers uh, all popped in. They all moving nicely. And then we can see that it does fit underneath our brass plate just nicely, just like so. So we got all nicely aligned uh, and popped together. So that means we're now ready to put our switches in. Uh, and as I said, today we are using uh, red holy pandas. So these are, uh, are made from Yok red housings with halo clear stems. Um, and they've got 72 gram progressive springs in from Sprit. They're lubed with Crytox 106 on the stem, the housing, and the spring. Uh, all hand lubed, might I add, not uh, tub lubed. So there we go. They are plate mount switches. They're not PCB mount. There's no nubbins on these switches. So they're a little bit easier to uh, to install in this board because uh, these are going to be really tight in the plate. Um, <clears throat> and then for the space bar, we've got uh, a special switch which has got a 100 gram spring in, so it's slightly heavier, uh, given it's a larger key. Um, let's catch up with the chat. Fax is not plate mount. Yep, they're not plate mount. Um, 
James says, nice to play. Oh, in reference to uh, Kami Sama's uh, board. Yeah, it is. It's a lovely till colour, actually. It's really nice. Uh, Isa Return says, thank you for being an awesome SXXX teacher. 500 bits. Oh, thanks, dude. I really appreciate that, man. Uh, it just helps to bring the noise down for others. There are other quiet switches. I mean, you can hear from this that it's quite quiet. Hold on, let me go somewhere where I can type. And there are silent switch as well, so you, you, it, is, it is relatively silent. Um, I've already got a bottle with silent reds on order, but hasn't shipped yet. I could cancel, but I think I'll wait out and try it out. Uh, but it's been a month delayed. Oh, what board is it? Let us know, dude. Let us know. Any news on when we can expect a J01 group by J? So, the news at the moment is I'm going to do a 10 spot prototype version 2 run. There's a couple of things I want to tweak from version 1 board, which is what we're building today. And a 10 spot proto run for 10 people will happen, I think, um, unless I extend it a little bit more to slightly more numbers to try and get a bit of a better price. Um, at the minute, I've got about 40 people interested. So if you are interested, do ping me on Discord, anybody that is interested. Uh, there's three or four people that are guaranteed to get onto the uh, onto the 10 spot group by purely because they've helped me with the design or they've helped me uh, with some other aspects, putting me in touch with the right people, all that kind of stuff. So there's a couple of people who are definitely getting boards. The remaining will be raffled off to whoever's within uh, the rest of the list, um, assuming they're comfortable with the price uh, and everything else and accepting of the risks that it's a prototype and all of that kind of stuff. Then we'll move forward with that. If anyone's not happy, they feel free to drop out uh, before money changes hands. And then once we've got 10 people, People that have paid, some people that have covered the cost of the board, and that's all it's going to be. It's just going to be bare bones cost, no profit, nothing else. It's just going to be the literal cost for me to get all the parts here, quality control check them, and then ship them out to you. Um, we'll run the 10 spot, you know, prototype run. I'm hoping to do that first week in April, get to that point where all the money is exchanged first week in April, and I can pay the factory uh, by the end of that week, and then it will be about 30 to 45 days for production of parts. Uh, another two weeks to ship to me uh, and then a week or two for me to do quality control and ship them out which will take a week or two from the UK around the world. So realistically we're talking about a month from now in terms of cost when people have to pay up and then probably about three and a half months after that for delivery. So that's broadly where we're looking at but if anyone does want to get on the list do send me uh, a notification on Discord and I'll add you onto that list manually. And um, When I get back from holiday next week, I'm going to set up a channel just so that everyone can be aware of what the costs are. And if they're not comfortable, they can drop out. And then once I've just got the final 10, uh, I'll lock the Discord down to just those 10. And then we'll move forward with the uh, prototype row. So that's the plan. That's the current plan. It may change, uh, but that's how it is right now. Um... <clears throat> Uh, a ducky one two. Oh, the ducky boards are good actually. Um, so yeah, you'll enjoy that stuff. Um, they're, they're not bad boards to start out with. Uh, this is heavily custom boards, so we're talking three, four, five, six hundred dollar boards and the rest. Uh, my Alice, which is just up here, which is uh, that's you know probably on the aftermarket now. It's a nine hundred dollar board. The VEA is probably not far off that. The Vern has no price at the minute. It's you know crazy expensive. The Singer just here. This one just here. That's a three hundred dollar board. And so the, the the prices are crazy. The Zephyr here is probably six hundred dollars something. Like that. So the prices are very very crazy when you get this far into the hobby as I have. Um, but where you are right now, that Ducky one two is probably a bargain buy for a hundred twenty dollars. I think they are, if I remember rightly. So really hope you get that and you enjoy it. Um, so back to Kami Sama, he says, I'll put all the screws in if that's what you mean. Uh, and Face Shift sent me a message on Disc, uh, Discord. Yeah, thank you very much for that, dude. I will have a look at that afterwards. Oh, and Talisman Solutions gifts a tier one sub to Sauron. So well done, Sauron, on that. And thank you very much. Talisman, thank you. Um, the spacebar type's fine, it's just that it's already partly actuated. That sounds like it's sitting too low on the stabs. Um, you, you, your key doesn't have to be fully inserted into the stabilizer. It doesn't have to go all the way to the base of the... Uh, um, it doesn't have to go all the way down to the base of the stabilizer if, if that's not where it sits. As long as it's on the stabilizer, at least part of the way through that five millimeters or so, uh, and it's fully on the switch, I don't think you've got a problem. Uh, Gib Alice. Uh, James, if you want to borrow it, man, you come around, pick it up, bring it back. You're welcome to borrow it. Okay, so let's carry on with the build. So we've got the PCB and the stabilizer sorted. What we're going to do now is we're going to put the switches into the into the plate. Excuse me. And the reason why we're going to put the switch into the plate first is because these switches don't fit in this plate very well. So as anyone knows, the, um, the Panda housings, the Jesus housings, and the Yok Red Panda housings are slightly thicker. 
than a standard MX or Gator on Switch, and that does make them putting into a normal plate slightly more difficult than normal. Um, so this is going to be painful for my thumbs, I suspect. We'll start off around the uh, ISO Enter, and as you can see, I'm already having to force this in significantly. Gosh, I can't even get this one into the plate. Yeah, this is going to be a tough day. So I do apologize, guys. I'm trying not to rip off the uh, the nitrile rubber as well. So that's still not fully in. Let's turn it over, try it the other way. There we go. That might be an easy way of doing this, actually, doing them upside down. Um, so, uh, Mr. Munich says, three cheers for the Patriot Center of Keebs Talisman Solution. Talisman is an actual actual living legend. He is a superman of uh, sporting keyboard discord servers. So thank you very much, dude. We genuinely appreciate your efforts. Okay. So that is working quite well, turning the plate over and pushing the plate from upside down. Um, I'm just going to start filling in the, uh, the board now. One switch at a time. Ones near the edges are going to be the tougher ones. The reason I've done the space bar first, guys, is just because I've got a different spring weight in there and I don't want to forget it. So these are going in slowly but surely. He says, I'm not able to get this one in. Wow, I'm already getting a sweat on uh, and pushing these in. Um, I don't think I've seen others so flip it upside down yet. Yeah, thumb saver. Uh, Lex Arama, good evening, sir. It's a while since I've seen your name around. Thank you very much for joining, dude. Um, J Innovation. <laughs> uh, I could come down and build my Anzi with you. You could, James. You could come back on stream. We could have you on stream again and do that. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I would absolutely love to do that. Uh, Kakan says the workout for the year. Yeah, absolutely, my dude. Um, I am not a gym bunny, so this is. Do you know what? I'm gonna. We're gonna keep going this way, and if this doesn't keep on working, we'll change method. But it seems to be working so far. It's just gonna be a slog, is this build? I'm afraid, guys. Trying not to bend the plate as I do this as well is going to be really tough. Just checking they're all fully level and installed before we carry on. Yeah, this is going to be a, a slog. Um, Talisman Solution says, J-Streams are a great assist to polishing one's British slang. Yeah, good for you, man. Good for you. I'm going to go make a cuppa, and will you be done when I come back, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, the whole board will be built, put together. You'll be listening to the sound test when you come back after a cuppa. Absolutely. <laughs> um, I'm already regretting deciding to do this today, because uh, I do go on holiday tomorrow, so I feel like I'm going to be going with broken thumbs. Hopefully it will be worth my while once the build's complete. Okay. That did feel marginally easier from the top, did that one. Maybe we should go back to that method. Maybe not. That feels now it's stuck. Oh, this one's not clipped on properly correct, that's why. There we go. Just trying to make sure that these are fully level. And a 
feel like this may take a little bit longer than some of my normal build streams, so I do apologise in advance, guys. Now, which way I press these, it's painful. does not want to go in at all there we go it's in oh, we're getting there we're getting there um <laughs> awesome back in five minutes. is that a brass plate it is a brass plate yes it's a custom made brass brass plate for my uh my custom board the j01 uh which we will show you shortly or if you guys want to check out my last week's stream you'll be able to see it there Oh, there we go. <laughs> uh, Anarchy says we need to use a thimble, or should it be a thumble? Yeah, what we, what I need is a piece of three D printed plastic that has a little nubbin on it that sits over my thumb, and then on the front it's got enough of a grip to sit on the MX stem so that I can push it in. That's what we need in the community right now. So someone please go create that tool. Uh, and Bard says good evening. Good evening, sir. Uh, Kakan says bend gay. Yeah, it won't bend, won't the brass plate, or certainly won't bend and stay bent. Uh, it will be more than fine. It'll stand up to this rigorous exercise that we're going through at the minute. Just making sure that everything is fully pressed in where it needs to be. There we go. Um, Talisman Solution says, Top Clack, be sure to leave the door key in the usual place so we can pill for your collection while I'm away. Yeah, sure, I'll, I will do exactly that. Uh, Elliot says, did you delete the old J Keebs Discord? I did. It was old, it was defunct. The literal only thing it did was notify people that we're going live here. Most people are now in the Top Clack Discord or the MK UK Discord, so... <sighs> It, would, it didn't need to be there anymore, basically, so I got rid of it this afternoon. Um, Pesci Maniac says, I thought that it has, is that a breastplate? And I got confused. No, brass plates, brass. Um, I got excited for a moment. Woo. Need a sewing thimble. I need a big th sewing thimble for these fat thumbs. That would be a massive thimble. Um, what's the difference between red holy pandas and normal ones? <laughs> They're just red. Simple as that. These are made by Yok, which is basically uh, beast and housing, but they're identical to the, uh, the the Jesus housing, which is very, very close to original panda housing. So, yeah, they're almost the same. 99% <clears throat> of the same switch. Okay. Have messed up on this one because I've not got it in straight. Let me just grab my IC extractor. If you don't get these going in straight to begin with, they're difficult to rectify. So I'm going to just grab something hard and metallic to push these switches in with. Let's go with the lid of this tool. And we should be able to... There we go. Okay, building up a little bit of steam there, guys. just does not want to go flush at the front end. There we go, that's it. Um, Tazma says, that's good for commitment to top clack. I like appreciate a man who can move forward decisively like that. 
thanks. <laughs> Um, J.O. made the Frankie switch that you mentioned during last top pack. Halo housing, Jesus stem. I did it the same with the cherry housing. Pretty similar. Looks like a good alternative to MX packs. Hey, man, if you like them, good for you, man. Absolutely good for you. Um, I'm not massive a fan of them, but it's probably the best you can do with them. New colour for the next round of these yoks. Yes, these will be a different colour next round. Oh, and Talisman Solution giving another tier one sub. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. Uh, Jetsamir says, hey, guys, I'm new here and curious. What's going on here? Where can I buy such a keyboard? Can I also build one myself? Um, and uh, Zima says, I'm here for that charity purple. Just kidding, the Joe one is too sick. Um, so, uh, Jetimir, so what we're doing here is building a custom keyboard. So this is a fully aluminium and brass CNC milled keyboard case that's been designed by myself and uh, a gentleman called Teslatron for me. It's a one-off right now. There's only one in the world. Um, and that's right here at the side of me. And... Um, we're building it basically we put the switches in the plate these are custom switches that have been for one of a better word bastardized and frankenstein from a number of different other switches so new springs new switch uh housings and new stems all combined to make a new switch and this is going to go in a custom pcb that martin uh, another member of the community designed and had produced for me so this is a completely custom pcb with some cherry stabilizers provided by community member fax um, and basically I'm building it all together on a gasket mounted isolation mount methodology uh, which is very unique and different to custom keyboards it's not something you can get in retail keyboards and then I'm going to put it all together and it'll look broadly similar to this one this is a different one this is a Zephyr produced by Zeal uh, generation um, and built by myself on stream a few weeks ago uh, which again is a brass plate custom switches and custom keycaps as well um, so it's basically a channel where we build custom keyboard stuff. Okay, uh, what colour is the next round? Uh, to be confirmed, the next round of the York Red Pandas has not been confirmed in terms of its colour choice yet. Gosh, guys, this is going to absolutely kill me to ace this build. I'm glad I've got a week off before I do another stream, I'll be honest. And just to be clear as well, uh, Jatimir, these are not usually so difficult to build as this. This is uh, a particularly difficult build, uh, just in terms of mounting the switches into the plate. Normally they just pop in without any issue whatsoever. Pretty much like that one did. Um, no problem. If you have any questions at all, I'm more than happy to answer them. So please don't hesitate to ask, guys. Uh, especially if you're new to the community and something doesn't make sense or you've never seen this before and you're asking around. Um, there are lots of other boards, as uh, Elmo is saying. Um, custom boards like this can go anywhere from you know, a few hundred dollars to a few thousand dollars. Um, there's a massive difference in price range. feel like I'm going to end up drawing blood at some point on this stream. I can just feel it coming. Okay. May have to take this one out if we can't get this one in. not going to go in just like that so we're going to have to pop this one out try again there we go kind of like finger condoms made for heavy duty work that is exactly what we need my dude These are just so tight, these switches. Just getting them in this board is a real challenge right now. But we are making good progress. We 
making sure all these switches are actually closed in terms of the housing. Some of them feel like they're not quite there. Through a few different methods, we're getting them in. Okay, Kami Summer says, do you ever get berated for running multiple keyboards? I'm reaching my seventh, my friends are starting to worry. Uh, no, I'm somewhere around 100, dude, so I don't at all. Jay, I'm about to build the same switch with my Halos and Yorks. Did you loop with 3203? That is what I'm thinking. No, I did 106 on uh, all parts of the switch, uh, the housing, the stem, and the spring. I do find that greases affect tactility too much in a tactile switch, so I try and stay away from it, uh, unless it's on uh, a Zeal V2. Man. I am already exhausted from doing this, and we've only got half the switches done. Uh, again, another housing that's not quite clipped together. Okay. So I've got a fairly good method now. Press one side of the switch in, press the other side in using the switch opener tool or the lid for it. It is marking some of the switch tops a little bit, but nothing major. All this for a little bit of keyboard science. Uh, we need full cam to see all the sweat, tears and blood. There's no blood yet, but I feel like there's going to be at some point I'm going to slip or press something a little bit too hard, but you probably see the sweat dripping down my brow shortly. This one just doesn't quite want to go in. There we go. There we go. Blood, toil, tears, and sweat. That sounds like a good lyric for a song. Again, another difficult one to get in here. There we go. I might just try and do all of this top row now. Try and get all of these done. And then we can move on to taking a bit of a break. So guys, if you've got any questions or anything like that, please do start to stack them up in chat. And then once I've finished getting these switches in, I can address all of those for you. Um, hopefully it won't take me too long to get through the rest of this build. Hopefully I'm not gonna break my desk. Okay, so that switch is not fully closed. So I'm just gonna pull this one out. Again, you can see here, guys, that this switch just wasn't quite closed. Little nip, and it's back into position. There we go. Two more, and then we'll come back down a row. We'll do the macro pad at the end, completely last. Okay, so this one doesn't want to go in. I'm just going to try and force it with the tool. There we go. Man. Um. Why not upper window? It's plenty cold outside. Because we've got a storm here and I don't want hail all over the floor, um, I have got a couple of cold drinks outside me, so I'll be fine. I don't want to uh, get hail all over my office. Um, 
Kakan says, how much do you lift? I don't lift, dude, let's be honest. I'm not exactly the uh, type of guy that's a gym bunny, so I would have no clue what I could or couldn't lift. Never tried. Actually, two questions. I'm changing the branding on the UK728 to something like UK78CU for the copper case. Just wonder if there's a better way to put the CU in the air. And also, I'm getting some Holly Pandas. Do you have a spring recommendation? 78 gram spring for Holly Pandas is my favourite. 67 gram is preferred by the community. Um, I'll send you both and you can try both. Uh, I would do... What I would do is I would do lowercase c, capital UK78, and then it looks like CU78 and UK78 all at the same time. That's probably how I would do it. Um, Blood, Sweat and Tears was a 1960s, 1970s rock group with a brass section like Chicago and Chase. Oh, interesting. I've never heard of them, but thank you very much for that talisman. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, I thought about that, but CUK78, can't unsee the cook. Oh, yeah, I didn't think of that. That's a good point. Um... <laughs> Um, in that case, I would probably just call it uh, the UK seventy eight C. Or what about the CU seventy eight? I don't know. Uh, Met advice guy says evening. Good evening, good sir. Good to see you. We are putting the stiffest switches in the stiffest plate known to man, uh, and having a terrible time doing it. Yeah, CU seventy eight. I think that's how I would do it. If uh, Rosakin is good with you doing that, then that's how I would position it. Okay, guys, making some good progress now. He says as he finds one that just will not push in. There we go. I don't know if you guys can hear these when they do go in, but they don't have to make a click sometimes. Something tells me that one's not going to press from the underside. There we go. Okay, so just a few more left now, guys. Uh, or UK 78 39CU. That's a good point, actually, Kakan. You could do that. Uh, so for Holy Pandas, did you loop the stems and spring? Yes, I looped the stems, the housing, and the spring. All with Crytox 106. Um, yeah, yeah, I like the UK 78 39CU. I do like that. That's quite nice. Put its atomic number on there. I think, is, it, is that its atomic weight? Or is it just its reference number in the periodic table? I can't remember my chemistry classes from so long ago. Okay, almost there now, folks. Let's get this uh, finished off. Watching from France today, by the way, have had a long day, but also some beer. Oh, nice. Nice that you're in France. Um, I will be in Budapest tomorrow. We fly in a few hours' time. So the plan is to finish up the stream, rough, get a rough pack done. Uh, the missus has already started packing. I think she's actually doing it right now as we speak. And then once we've packed, it's pretty much straight off. So uh, it's going to be a quick change around after stream, which means I've got probably about another hour and 30 minutes that left that I can stream for before I really have to start making a change and getting ready to go. Yeah, just holidays in Budapest. Yeah, yeah just going for uh, a long stay in Budapest. So five nights. Uh, I think we're back next Friday, if I remember rightly. So for those of you in the Discord, be prepared for some 
Budapest spam pictures. And I don't mind some of these switches are so tough. Just need to press right in that gap there. No, I'm gonna have it. I have to go from the top. There we go. We're in. We're in. Home straight now, guys. We can do this. That's not quite in. There we go. Whew. Almost doing the bottom row and then move on to the macro pad. And step caps lock key as well. In fact, actually, guys, let me know. Do you think I should go with step caps or full caps on this board? Bear in mind, it's gonna this this version is gonna have uh, GMK space cadet on. So let me know in chat. Step caps or full caps? And I will go with the majority decision. This top corner for this switch doesn't want to go in. There we go. Stepped, 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 full, stepped, 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 stepped. Okay, so stepped's winning. Uh, let's go with stepped. It is my preferred version. Easiest one to push in because it's got no other switch at the side of it and a fuller uh, switch hole. Just got the macro pad left to do now, guys. I think we have bent the plate slightly, but we can rectify that before we put it together. If anyone's got any recommendations on things to do or see while we're in Budapest as well, please do let me know. Uh, stepped plus one. Explain the difference, please. Uh, between stepped or non-stepped, it's just stepped or non-stepped caps lock. <clears throat> Hookers and bathhouse. Yeah, we're going to do the bathhouse. We're definitely going to do the bathhouse. That's already on the list. If anyone's got anything off the beaten track that we could try as well, we'd be more than happy and willing to give it a go. Okay, last one. Uh, has it always been a green a screen on the back in a loop? Uh, it's not in a loop, it's just a YouTube video channel, that's what it is for some music. Um, but yeah, it's usually on whenever I'm streaming solo. Uh, take a detour to Sweden. I would love to go to Sweden. Um, that would be fantastic. I assume that by saying that, Kakan, you're in Sweden? Is that is that where you're from? So I'm just going to check that all of the pins are aligned before I start to try and push this into the, uh, the PCB. I'm just going to make sure they're all perfectly vertical. We have bent the, piece, the, the plates slightly doing that, so I'm just going to try and re-bend it back. Um, Try and make sure it's fully level again. There we go, that's pretty much okay. So just to show you guys, uh, it's level all the way across. And then we're gonna overlay this on top of the PCB. We're gonna hope that all the pins align. And we're gonna hope that this just clicks together. And everything just fits nicely.
I'm just going around and just clicking it into place now, guys. Trying not to uh, hurt my fingers too much. Oh, we've got a switch that's not in position. That's not helping. I'm going to pull that one out, push that in afterwards. We'll come back and we'll get that switch later. So you can see I'm just pushing this all together now. In fact, let's lay this down and that should, as we just work our way up, up the board, it should just all click together. There we go. Just needs a little bit of pressure to hold it in place correctly on some switches, so we'll uh, we'll tack it in place when we start to solder. I'm just going to try and put this last switch in straight into the uh, the PCB. Hopefully this will go in just fine. Uh, he says not being able to push it in. Uh, nope, we've bent the pin. This may become a problem switch. straighten up this pin take some pliers to it okay that's nice and straight again now try again the issue here is it's going to have to go in fully flush and straight down. Let's check that's aligned. Nope. Bend the other pin this time. Let's just straighten this up. Third time lucky. There we go, perfect. Okay, so that's all of the switches in the board. Finally, finally, um, <laughs> we've got the switches in. That was a bit of a pain, uh, I, won't, I will be honest. My thumbs and fingers are killing me. Uh, lots of indentations on my fingers, you probably can't see them with the light. Um, my thumb especially is very sore right now. But it's done, it is done. Let's mine this out of the way. Um, before I get to the soldering, I'm just going to catch it with chat and see what you guys are talking about. Ah, feels bad when Jay does not see my sub. Oh, sorry, dude. Did you sub? I do apologize. If you subbed and I missed it, I am completely and utterly sorry. Uh, thank you very much, Matt Advice Guy, for your sub. Thank you. Let me scroll back up and have a look at that. And I see Neo Jonathan's joined the chat as well. Uh, and subscribe to Tier 1, three months. Will you put in the macro keys in the correct order this time? Um, no. You can tell me what order to put them in. How about that? How about that? Because I missed your sub. When it comes to the macro keys, you can tell me what order you want me to put them in. Mr. Munich says, I wonder if having a small single hole brass plate to pop switches into for a brief moment to thin them could be viable. Maybe. Uh, Fly Bunny says, I use a rectangular eraser to push switches into stubborn plates. Just put the eraser on top of the switch, press down on the eraser and said it works great. That's a fantastic idea. That's nice and soft and rubbery. It's not as hard on my fingers as a bit of metal is, and it should still give me the pressure required to get something in. That is a fantastic idea. At one point I did used to use keycaps and put keycaps on the stems and push them until I snapped a keycap and that was not pleasant. Um, that was doing a polycarbonate singer which again has notoriously tight plates uh, for larger switches. So one of those. Um, we then got into the whole stepped caps debate so thank you very much for that stepped caps vote. Um, yeah, go to the Grand Budapest Hotel. We should do, actually, yes. I don't know if that's a real thing in Budapest, but if it is, I'll check it out. Uh, talks about the screen behind me. Yes, didn't know Jay was a weeb. I'm not, I just like the music. A little bit of music's good. Um, normally, I would have something a little bit more classical on when I'm doing stuff like this privately, but hey, this will do. This will do. Uh, smart going to Eastern Europe before you need to get a visa to travel. Uh, yes, that's very true. 
If you want a good cheap feed and pretty traditional goulash or percolate, go to the For Sale pub. Some of the ruined bars are pretty good too. I'll definitely check those out. I'll add that to the list. Thank you very much, Gauti. Thank you. Uh, it's a chill music stream on YouTube. Yeah, that's all it is. Yeah, it's just on in the background because it's nice to listen to. It's very popular and it's just easy to build to, well, usually. Have I ever broken a board while building it? No, not yet. I've never even lifted a pad when desoldering it, actually. Um, so, yeah. That sounded healthy. Yeah, it's fine. It's just clicking in. It's just literally the switches lining up and all that. It was fine. Um, also, if you end up in this, um, I can't even pronounce it, Sejani Baths, the big yellow public one, the best zone is hidden in the corner under some stairs. It has a mosaic plunge pool and ornate ice chipper too. Most people barely know it's there. I will try and take a look for that, dude. Thank you. Um, just a little bit of pressure. Snaps plate in half. Nah, it's fine. Yorks and Jesus too thick, says Neo Jonathan. Yes. Uh, and Neo Jonathan, I did say on stream the other day when we were streaming on Tuesday that if someone got a perfect bracket for round one, I would send them a gift. Um, I have got a gift for you. Well, give me one second. Uh, it's in the middle of my drawer somewhere. I do apologize about this. Sorry, give me one second. One second. Okay. So the gift I have for you, uh, near Jonathan, is a golden Pexon colour cable for a number one. Um, it's stuck in my drawer, but it is brand new. It's never been used. Um, it looks a little bit more golden in real life than yellow that you can see on there. Um, but I just wanted to send you a token of my appreciation for your help with uh, and your fantastic, um, wonderful opening bracket for Met Madness. So I'm going to send you this. Uh, if you PM me, PM me your address, uh, it's mini USB. Um, and then standard USB on the other end, uh, but a golden cable. So I will send you that, including a cable holder that I have just pulled off pulling out of the drawer, uh, and I'll get it sent to off to you as soon as I'm back off holiday. So uh, watch out for that in the post if you PM me your address. Let's try and coil this up a little bit nicer. There we go. There we go. So I'll get that sent out to you, uh, Jonathan. Thank you very much for your uh, winning bracket. Thank you. <coughs> um. New esports champion, yeah. What breaking my thumbs? Uh, <laughs> uh, I want to give Blood a heart attack. Just random. Uh, okay, cool. Right, so there we go, guys. That's that all built. What we're going to do now is get round to the soldering. So I have got a full setup ready to go. And what we're going to do is we're just going to tack a few switches in place first of all. Um, my soldering wheel is just here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some pressure down on the PCB. I'm going to solder in a switch in each corner, two switches in the middle, and then we'll go from there. And that should hold it down nice and neatly and tightly enough uh, for us to be able to solder the rest. That's one there. We're going to then come up to this top corner. Okay, we're then going to come over to the other side. Again, just making sure we're making in fact that one has a missing pin so we're just gonna to have to fix that in a second solder that one in just there we're gonna come across to the middle and we're gonna put some pressure down and we're gonna solder this one just here and then we're gonna solder the one just to the side of it And then we're just going to fix this switch in the top corner before we carry on with our soldering. Uh, so that's this switch just here. If we can get the switch out of the plate, that is. Okay, the switch does not want to come out. Let's try and just. Prise it away a little bit here. Okay, we've bent the switch open now. Let's club it. There we go. There we go. We fix this bent pin. It's nice and straight now. And then I'm going to try and get that all back in in place. Check that we can see both pins. 
we can, and that means we're good and ready to solder. There we go. Okay. Just put the macro keycaps on randomly. Don't even color code it, just color coordinate. Well, we could put some of the uh, random row correct um, international kit keys, actually. I might put uh, some of these numbers on there. Uh, you can tell me how to put them on when we look at it. Or we might just go with the numpad numbers or something. I don't know yet. Uh, oh man, you're triggering me as well now. Um, <laughs> the red keyboard looks sexy as hell. This is a Zephyr. Uh, it is absolutely lovely. Uh, so thank you very much for that dev car. That's got Helio switches in. These are Yok Red Pandas, uh, Holy Red Pandas. Uh, what temperature are I using to solder and what solder? So I'm using 320-ish degrees and this is Kester solder, uh, 0.8 millimeter, so it's just under a millimeter thick. What I'm going to do now is just solder the macro keys in first and then once all these are soldered in, I'll go onto the main part of the board. So I'll just do these nice and quickly. And then once we've done these, we'll move on to, as I say, the full portion of the board. So we'll, we'll solve that one. Okay. That's the macro keys done. I'm just going to come over to the far side and do the arrow keys and this macro column here as well. And that's the first 16 of 73 switches done, or 76 switches, I can't recall on this board. I think it's 76 actually. Okay. Making some good progress now, boys and girls. There we go. That is a $600 keyboard, yeah, and that's, as uh, Geo says, this one off here is the Geo when it's a little bit more expensive, maybe close to double, I'd have to add it up. Um, one offs are a cheaper price, yes they are, no, Ocelot is a cheaper one to me. Uh, yeah, the Ocelot was only $130 or something like that. Uh, yeah, custom PCB, custom case, custom brass, custom magnetic pen rail, custom gaskets, customized switches custom made switch plates. Um, it's pretty pretty up there in terms of the customs design. Uh, and right now it's the only one in the world, but there will be 10 more soon. There'll be 11 in total. I'm just going to solder a couple of switches in, in this area first. And then we're going to make our way across this top row. As soon as we've done a couple of these rows, I'll take a look back and start to have a look at your questions, guys, if you have got any. As I say, if anyone is looking to get in on the 10 spot group by uh, or of, of proto round, be very clear this is another prototype round, not an actual group by round. So uh, there are, are all the standard prototype risks associated with it. Um, do PM me and get onto the list. Um, there's quite a few people on the list already, but uh, you have to be in it to win it, as they say. come back across this row here. This is the QWERTY row. We've done the number row. We're now doing the QWERTY row. Probably just over-soldered that switch a little bit. Remember, I am always double-checking that switches have got pins visible for me to solder onto. Um, because if they haven't, I don't want to solder into a switch and then have to desolder it and pull it out of a plate this tight. 
it was very important to me that it's soldered properly the first time round. Good progress here now. Okay, that one needs pulling out and putting back in. So, this is the stepped caps lock key. And then we're going to come back along this row. As I say, I'm just double checking each one, making sure I can see both pins before I touch it with the solder. And if I can only see one pin, I will be very much leaving that switch and coming back to it. Just past the two switches we soldered in the middle of the board to help get us that rigidity. And the plate and PCB align correctly. Apologise for the slow soldering today, guys, but just want to make sure we're getting it all right. Gonna come back along this row. So this is the Z row. Then we'll do the space bar row, and then we are done. Apart from that one switch that just needs pulling out. The pin re-leveling off and then re-soldering. So we'll take a minute to do that in a second. Very slow today, guys. So I do apologise for that. But we'll uh, we're almost done. Last row now. We've got three one two point five U keys here. Then the six point two five U space. We're just about to jump onto now. We've got the last two 1.25U modifier keys just here. And then that one switch to fix, and then we're good to go. In terms of the switch to fix, it's this one right here, which we'll just try and pull out. just as hard to get out as they are to get in. There we go. And as you can see, the pin on the bottom is just bent out of place, so we're just going to straighten that up. And then we're going to attempt to put that back in. Just like so. I'm flip this over. Make sure we can see both pins, which we can. Quickly solder it, and then we can start to put the rest of the board together. There we go. And that's it. Soldering complete. All done and dusted on the soldering front. So Talisman Solutions just gifted another tier one sub to Devcar11. Thank you very much for that, Talisman, and well done, Devcar, for the uh, the free sub there. Um, let me catch up with what's going on in the chat. I'll find somewhere to put my drink now. Um, Gary says silly money. Yeah, it is. Uh, Macro pad, not keyboard. It is. Yeah, mm, yeah, it's still part of the same hobby. 
Not quite double. It, uh, I'm exaggerating it a little bit, Sashimi. I, the reason why I said it was double is because if you include both key sets that I've got on what will be the two different builds for the JO1, so you've got Red Samurai on one and GMK, um, it's basically that, <laughs> had to look at it, um, then it probably would be over double. But with both of them together, it's broad. Well, if you put one key set in there, it's probably broadly double the cost of the Zephyr, including its key set and its custom um, artisans as well. So, yeah. Um, did you check the PCB works before the stream? I did, yes. All of the PCBs have been fully tested by Martin. All, all of them work successfully. Uh, I've tested them as well and no problems whatsoever. Um, will it magnetic pen holder? Yes, you'll see when I put it together. Uh, will it run Crisis? Might run the original one. Uh, custom builder, customised by life circumstances. Absolutely. Um, works great. He was able to level his desk by placing it under one of the legs. Yeah, pretty much. <clears throat> I feel like you could... Um, sorry, says, I feel like you could and this little something as an emote. Let me have a look. Oh, yeah. If you could make that an emote for me, I would love that. I would absolutely add that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if we're including sets and all that, it's not too bad then. Yeah, so, I mean, realistically, I think the, the Zephyr was actually quite cheap. I got the Zephyr for $300, which was a bargain price uh, from Frostbite, so thank you very much for that, Frostbite. Um, then the terms of switches, the Helios, there's, probably, there's I think, about 100 so it's $100-ish of Helios, um, 70 in the board or something like that. Um, and then the keycap set was Jim K. Exempt, which cost me $110, and then the Artisans on top as well. I can't remember the broad cost for those, but all in, uh, about $450, $500 for me on this particular board. Uh, if you went to retail aftermarket pricing, you're probably talking $600 just for the board alone. In terms of the J01, the prototype was $650 plus shipping. Um, the PCBs were 200 euros for five, including daughter boards, and including the price for the design as well. Um, uh, obviously, I paid Tezatron an amount for his design as well. I can't remember what that was, but it was a, a fair amount as well. Gaskets were about $50, uh, including shipping for all of the test ones I had as well, because uh, I tried all sorts of different materials with this. Uh, two lots of switches, inks, and your credit pandas were provided by Mike, free of charge from Novel Key. So thank you very much for that, Mike, um, sending me that stock. And then the two key sets were about, uh, I think I paid £150, £175-ish dollars for Red Samurai, uh, and then the uh, £185 for um, GMK Space Cadet, plus I spent a little bit in getting some extras as well. So that's broadly the cost breakdown. Broad, broadly. Um, I was saying $1,200 one-off still seems a bit high. Yes. Yes, yeah, mostly it's the, the, the sets as well that are put out. Oh, and Neil Jonathan with the resub, thank you very much for that. I do apologise if I missed that earlier on, but uh, it has just popped up on my screen now, so thank you very much for that, dude. Um, is this a new PCB? It's a second PCB. I've got five of them, so I've got three spare. Um, I'm using the same daughter board because that's already in the board, so there's no point in changing that out. The other build's actually on the wall just here next to the Vern, so that build all that's vertical. That's carbon fibre plate with red samurai on it. Um... Oh, this is actually in the sizes for the MO. Oh, thanks, Soren. I will definitely put that on there. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, it's okay. I will look the other way with that ISO this time. Uh, it is ISO on this board. But as you can see, we do have anti-ones. This is actually my wife's work board. Um, she's brought it home because she wants me to put louder switches in it for a work board and Helios. So there we go. Um, which board am I having Seracoted through Tyson? I'm having two done through Tyson. The first board is my Exempt, which is going to be a bright copper orange colour to match my Datsun. And the second board is my Royal 66, which is going to be a blue colour, um, because when I got it, it did have a slight bit of damage on it, so that's all been sandblasted away. And that's going to be a nice blue colour ready for GMK Mizu. So there we go. Um, so there we go, yeah. Forgot to resubscribe, says uh, Neil Jonathan. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, Lex Ramon, no, it's a Datsun. Nissan was a brand after Datsun. Um, so, yeah, 1976, when it was made and manufactured in the US and the UK and in Japan, they all went under the Datsun brand, not under the Nissan brand. So, it is a Datsun. Um, that's what the badge says on the car, and that's what the original manufacturer sheet says. There we go. Yes, I've got a fair lady, Elmo. Yeah, 1976. Um, that's in Z. 1976 when I was minus 20. Uh, no, actually minus 9, so it's 9 years older than me as a car. Uh, damn, son. Yeah. Um, 
if anyone wants to see a pic, PM me, I'll, I'll share it gladly, because uh, I love the damn thing. It's my pride and joy. Right, now that that's built, finally, um, and this is all soldered together, we're going to put the board together, and then we'll do uh, a little bit of a sound typing test. And then that will be the end of the stream, guys. Um, uh, so yeah, in fact, actually, do you know what we'll do first? We will test this board out um, and see if it's all working. So I will just steal this USB-C cable. Um, and let me just get up switch hitter. I think this should come up for you guys. You should be able to see that on stream. Let me uh, just grab the base case. So there is the top piece. There's the brass middle. And here is the base. Oops. Throwing everything all over. So what we're gonna do here guys is I'm just gonna test this outside of the uh, the case itself. Let's just rearrange everything so we can do that nice and neatly. That's all that connected up neatly there, and then we'll just plug the USB cable in. And then we're going to just test these keys and go through. Uh, so this is uh, not the flash that it will have on it when I've done. So all of the keys on this side, the macro working, let's just test these. Okay, all working there, let's go through the row. Okay, so four doesn't work, we'll go back to that. Okay, so just the four keys so far isn't working. That's a nice, easy fix, I'm sure. Uh, shift, split shift there. M is working, I missed the key. And space. Okay, so just the uh, one key not working, so we'll come back to that in a second. <coughs> Put that back to one side. So as I said, the four key isn't working, so escape one, two, three, four, that's this one here. I'm just gonna reflow that and see if we can get it working properly. I'm fairly sure we will, so once we've reflowed it, um, we'll just go ahead with the build and uh, and we'll complete it after that. Get rid of that, there we go. Back to the normal stream. <laughs> Nissan, yeah, you can keep saying Nissan all you want, yeah. Yeah, fair lady, yeah, bright orange. Well, I say bright orange, it's a uh, colour called Gamma Gold, but yeah, it's uh, one of the things I've restored. Um, LS swap that's and No, you've got to keep them original. Mine's still got the original 28 uh, series engine in it, and they're absolute dream to drive. There is nothing better than the sound of a straight overhead six. That, that is literally the best sounding engine you can get, in my opinion. Um, you can tell me all about your V8, your V10s, your V12s, or your LSs, or whatever you want. An overhead cam, straight six, is where it's at. Um, <clears throat> spare this nice car with the American crap yeah absolutely uh, so actually I've got a 1JZ uh, no sorry I've not, I've actually got a 2JZ uh, drivetrain setup that I might put in a cage room at some point, that's one of the plans um, I remember the 240Z when it was first introduced as a Datsun, it is a Datsun it says Datsun on the car, it literally says Datsun on the registration documents it says Datsun stamped on the engine so it is a Datsun uh, the torque, oh my god, the torque, Geo, you, that that thing is not designed to pull anything, but it could easily pull a caravan, it's stupid amounts of torque. Um, CJT says, no replacement for displacement. Um, I do not subscribe to that theory, uh, I think there are uh, a lot of replacements for displacement. Uh, I do not think that that is the, uh, the end limit when it comes to cars. Need a touch more solder on this pad. I think it's actually fine, but we'll just give it a touch more. There we go. We'll test that again once we put the case together, but I'm 99% certain it will work, and if it doesn't, it's a dead easy job to desolder it and remove it. Just like Vauxhall is not the same as Opel. So, 
that's different. That's current brands used at the same time. When Nissan was using Datsun, they didn't use any other brand in those countries. So I, it's definitely a Datsun. Sorry, but it's a Datsun. W16 is what peak performance looked like. The smell of fresh lead. Yeah. Uh, an 05 Accord with an i4. Yeah, well, we can't all have nice cars, Gio. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go with that, guys. I'm pretty sure that that four key will work. Now, if it doesn't, I can always strip it down after the stream. Um, so just to show you guys how this case works again, so this is the internal brass piece with the brass weight. Um, the board does sit inside here and the gasket rests on this lip that goes all the way around the edge that you can see there. Um, so it is sculpted to fit that perfectly, he says as he tries to line it all up. With being rubber, it's slightly sticky in places. So as you can see, once that's in place, all the way around, Hold on. this is why I didn't want to have to reuse the gasket from the previous build, but I had to in the end because I didn't have enough spare parts from the gaskets. There we go. So that all sits nice and flush in there, as you can see, guys. It actually sits completely like flush with the brass. Um, there is a slight kink in the gasket just up on this top row. We can fix that quite easily. Might have to just push it out. There we go. There we go. So that all sits in there nice and flush. Uh, as you can see, it's the gasket that holds it in place. The brass plate doesn't actually touch the edges. So if the gasket wasn't there, it wouldn't work. So you can see that there's actually uh, a lot of flex in the PCB. Hold on, let me show you. I don't know if you can see the PCB moving up and down in there, but that's the compression of the rubber. Then the top plate sits over the top. As you can see, it's got a gasket on the inside as well, so that's slightly wider than the gasket beneath. And again, it just overlaps the edge of the uh, the plate to hold it all nice and neatly together. That does all sandwich down nice and neatly. Oh gosh. Oh, if I didn't hold it that way, the brass weight on this is unbelievably heavy. Um, so that forehead that's inside the board just weighs an absolute ton. Okay, just making sure that's all nice and neatly aligned, which it is. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to prop this up using a couple of rubber tools just so it's not sat flush on the desk. We're then going to connect up the PCB. This is a nice, simple little connector job. If I can use my left hand to do this job with. There we go. And then the base just sits on top, like so. Okay, and then we're just going to bolt all this together. And then I'll show you how the, uh, there is different size bolts. These ones are slightly longer. Just gonna screw in that one, just so it's finger tight. And we're gonna come over to the bottom corner, diametrically opposed. Always really important for screwing anything with any torque together. I'm gonna screw this one down. Put that nice and tight, make sure everything's nicely aligned, which it is. Tighten this top and back up, and then we're going to go around the board from there. <coughs> uh, would love a BRZ, uh, yeah. Not bad, BRZs are alright, yeah. The, the biggest thing I dislike about the BRZ is the fact that they have forced induction noise into the cabin, which I'm not a big fan of, but... Um, so a guy from the UK a while ago on YouTube that has uh, a 2JZ swap Ford Capri. That doesn't surprise me, I've seen a couple of those about. Um, how is the gasket attached to the plate? Um, it's actually just spray mounted on with just some ad adhesive. Um, it doesn't have to be. The idea is that once I've got the finalised version of the gasket as they've been redesigned slightly from how they're in this board, um, so they won't actually need to be bonded to the, uh, the PCB at all. The PCB will just sit inside them and rest in them without having to be bonded. <clears throat> I 
I do apologize for all the fingerprints over the board. They are marks of my fingerprints, not marks in the anodization. Um, what are those three by three metal thingies? Ah, uh, you'll see soon. You'll see soon. They are magnets for the pen rail, but you will see how it works soon. Um, oh, and Talisman Solutions giving a gift of the tier one sub to Kakan as well. Ninety two gift subs, man. Talisman, you are knocking it out of the park. Thank you very much, dude. Thank you. I, I can't wait to have one of these on my desk. Gio, we'll try and get you one soon. Bad rice guys got to go to bed, but thank you very much for watching, dude. Have a great evening. Thank you. Uh, Upa says, I love turbo noises, the high pitched spool sound and the blow off noises as well. Um, yeah, but you've not heard anything like a true overhead cam that's on a straight six. Oh. Top Gear chat, that is interesting. Yeah, it's one of those things. If you don't like cars, I'm sorry, I apologise. Goblin Dad says, Once upon a time I had a 240SX hatch. Those were the days. Too bad someone in my neighbourhood bust all my windows. That sucks, man. It is upsetting when people can't have nice things because of other people. Okay, last screw, boys and girls, and then we can start to put some keycaps on this thing. So there we go, that's the build uh, done. Oops, left that in behind. There we go. The reason I was using those is I just didn't want the board to pop out of the gaskets on the inside. So you can see that that's all there. Um, this is actually slightly more flexible. There's more flex in this than there was in the uh, uh, in the carbon fibre plate, interestingly. So now I'll show you how the pen rail works. So I think it was Kakan that was waiting for this. So you can see there are magnets just underneath the inside of the brass pen rail. There are magnets on the inside of the board. And then this just clips into place like so. And that is now a sturdy pen rail that's fastened to the board. Uh, and let's pop a pen on it just so you guys can see. There we go, brass pens finished their, their job. Or how it usually is, because I use it so often, it's usually like that. But there we go, that's the brass pen rail in action. Um, just some thoughts as well. So the brass pen rail is actually as thick as the brass in the middle when you look at it from the top angle. Um, the USB port is central. That's machined aluminium in the hole, the USB port is actually really tight. Let's see if we can show that a bit clearer. You can see it's all machined aluminium in there, it's really tight. USB hole, it's absolutely lovely. Uh, no gaps all the way around, the whole case is screwed together, so it's really heavy is this. Screwed together perfectly, no gaps. Any point anywhere around, all looking good. There we go. So now it's time to pop the keycaps on. Let's say we do have uh, the full international kit, I'm probably not going to open that just yet because I do have the UK specific keys in this set. Uh, not that set, sorry. In this set. Thank you, ISO returns for these. That's not a pen. Yes, it is a pen. You tell me whatever it looks like in chat if you really want to. Uh, okay, so we have got uh, there. One of the UK keys there, one of the UK keys, uh, two and three. Okay, so we're going to build up the rest of the board with the actual set. Just have some space to work. This is brand new, this set, it's not been on the board yet, or any board for that matter. You guys will have to let me know which looks better as well. This or the red samurai build with the carbon fiber plate showing through. Uh, I'm not sure which I prefer, but I think it might be the red samurai. Try and catch up with chat. Um, 
that's a shank. A shank? I don't know. It's like, oh, sorry, Tens is still here. He heard ISO. Yes, thank you for sending me the keys, dude. They are on the board already. Thank you very much for that, my man. Red Sam for sure. Yeah, I do like both sets, but I think Red Sam is slightly my favourite. Um, that's just knocked it out of the park, that set, let's be honest. It's the best set of this year, of last year, sorry. Okay. Interestingly, I might go grab the Hyper 7 after the end of this, just have two uh, Space Cadet keyboards next to each other that are completely custom and for me. This set is missing uh, a full grey mods kit. That would make it really nice, I think. A full grey mods kit would be lovely for this set. Um, now, question. Do I use a stepped caps lock key or do I use a stepped rub out key? What do you think, guys? Let me put both to one side. Stepped caps lock or stepped rub out? You guys can pick. Just let me know. Uh, Luke Helios says, wow, that is a beautiful board. Any chance for someone to get one? Uh, if anybody wants to try and get one, uh, I'm going to do a limited 10 spot run. Um, the trick to getting on that, uh, ASDF, yeah, uh, is to message me on Discord. I will add you to the list for the group I'm going to create. A few people have got a guaranteed slot in that 10 slot run purely because they've helped me out with the board or the design or shown significant support otherwise. Um, after that, anybody, any of the remaining slots will be raffled off. Um, there should be a few remaining spots to whoever's included in the original list, assuming they're comfortable with um, all of the costs and everything else associated with running a prototype and all of the risks as well. Uh, we are missing the... We do need to open this kit. Let's just use these. I just need this one key here for now. There we go. Start on the Z row. Rub out, rub out, rub out, rub out, rub out. Everyone's said rub out apart from you, Pass, who says caps lock. Rub out, actually, no change of mind, so rub out it is. There we go. Rub it out. Which board does Jay take on vacation? The only board that's coming with me on vacation is the TMO50, and that's because it's a great little travel board. How is it even a question? Rub out, of course. Yeah, you're probably right, CJT. You're probably right. Prepared to spend stupid money, yes. Have you heard of the nipple twist method on GMK? Uh, no, I haven't heard of that. Okay, these switches feel hella tactile while I'm putting this, uh, these keycaps on, guys. Uh, and now we need the 1.75U shift key, which is just here. And then we're going to move on to the base row. So a 6.25 view space bar. Uh, control. Super and Alt. My advice guy, you have, uh, if you're still there, you have control over these keys here, what order I put them in. If you respond before I finish this section of the board off, if you haven't, I'm just going to pick for you. Okay, um, and then we want print screen, and then page up, page down. In fact, actually, these are the wrong profile. Let me see if I've got the right profile in here. Uh, no, there it is. It's here. Let's just see if we've got a key cap here. Page up there, and then we just need page down, which is here. Whoops, uh, and then we're going to go with super just in here, and then I do want two more keycaps out of this, which is just the hyper, just because pay homage to the hyper seven, and we'll go for the control just there okay no one's come back to me uh, 
Here we go, boys. TMO50 is the greatest layout thing of you. Yeah, yeah, sure, whatever. We go top to bottom this time, just for advice, guys. Uh, support earlier on. There we go. There we go, guys. That's the board built. I'm just going to move that out of the way. That's the board fully kitted out with keycaps. Uh, I think I do prefer the uh, GMK Red Samurai. I think it fits this particular board better. If the board was a, a lighter grey, I think it would look good. Um, you can see all of the finger marks on the anodization here. I do apologize about that. Guys, it's not marks in the anode. You can see they are starting to come off, and I'll clean it all later on. Uh, let's just catch up with chat before we do the uh, the typing test. Um, uh, TMO, yeah, my TMO is coming tomorrow. I can't wait to see pictures of them. Put them on Insta. I do want to see them. Uh, Nathan Kim's last stream. Uh, ah, sorry, I haven't seen Nathan Kim's last stream. I do try and catch up with them, but they're always dodgy times for me because it's early hours in the morning. I usually end up watching them on a weekend when I'm laid in bed. Uh, first of all, classic inspirations. I think. Oh yeah, it's the uh, TMO50 meme. Yeah, <laughs> talk about it. he already said randomly spread without pattern. All right, well they've got a pattern on now. I, I missed that. Uh, was almost sleeping when I heard my name. Top to left, right F3 numpad F2. Is that right then? Is that what you mean? F1, 3, 5, 7, 2, 4, 6, 8. Is that what you mean? I think. Um, feels bad, man. Just missed it. I already heard the thock thock on the J01. Sound test, yes. Yeah, so let me turn the volume up on the TV. So I do think this will be a little bit more thocky. Um, it'll probably sound a lot more clacky as well. Um, the previous board had inks and carbon fiber plate in, so this is brass on true isolation mount with uh, holy red pandas and GMK keycaps. There we go guys, so it's very even sounding, that's the first thing I take from it. Um, the sound is consistent across the board. Uh, and we have fixed that, so I don't know if you saw in the internals earlier on guys, but the kind of cutout for the sound kind of goes along here. What we've done for the next version is we've actually expanded that out to the full size of the 60% portion of the board. So that is gonna sound more consistent across there than it does now. It sounds really consistent as it is. Um, so there we go. So that's the board. I think it sounds just as good as it does. Very different sound, but it's just as good in terms of quality as the previous build, which is just up there. Um, my takeaway before I read anything that you guys are saying in the chat is that the brass plate does accentuate the thockiness. Uh, the fact that it's a tactile switch also accentuates that. It's very much more even. The whole thing is incredibly tactile. That feels more tactile than the Holy Pandas in my canoe do, and they're lubed identically. Um, I 
you can feel the softness on the bottom out of the gas. It does make it feel a little bit softer with a brass plate. There is more flex there than there is with the carbon fiber plate. The carbon fiber plate is definitely more sturdy. Um, but the idea of the gasket in this is not to create more flex. It's actually to create a better sound profile. And I think what it does is it definitely makes it more even across the case uh, without adding too much rigidity like the uh, the five millimeter thick plate in the Zephyr does. Because uh, that's very evenly sounding as well. But it does that through just sheer thickness of the plate. So that's my current takeaway. Um, again, I'm incredibly happy that the philosophy behind the board has won out, uh, that it's proven that it's successful. Uh, it's proven that doing a true isolation mount does reduce case ping. There's no ping at all I can hear from the case. There's no ping from the switch because they've been lubed nicely. Um, there's no ping from the plate because the plate is completely isolated from the case. It's not metal on metal anywhere. Uh, it's literally just touching rubber. Um, the sound develops nicely inside the case. I think when we change that square underneath to expand it outwards, that will increase the, uh, the level of consistency across the board. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with it. Let's catch up and see what you guys said. Um, and I'm going to ignore any comments that mention my uh, my typing. I know it's not the best. Uh, so Upas says oof. Uh, Iso Return says nice. Geo says like a chipmunk type. Geo, do you want to stay on this list? Um, this is clacky. I like it. It's very clacky. I expected it to be. I said beforehand it'll be very clacky. Um, Sounds good, yeah. Uh, makes ping sound. There's no ping in there. Uh, it's just a brass plate for you. It's very even brass plate sound, which is exactly what I expected it to be and hoped it would be. Um, well done, Jane Tez. Uh, it sounds pretty okay, yeah. Uh, Rev 2 should sound a smidge different. It will It'll be a little bit more even across the board, as I've said. Um, so there we go. Uh, I like the spacing. Uh, yes, the spacing. Uh, so there. Oh, let's check the 4 key, yeah. Um, so. Uh, Glue has shouted out that we haven't checked that the four key is working, so let's test that now. Let me just get up switch hitter again. Give me one second to find my mouse. There it is. There we go. So you guys should be able to see that. So one, two, three, four. There we go. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. It just needed a reflow. There we go. All board working. Let's see if we can just swipe across. There you go. So everything's working. Uh, There we go, and F keys. There we go, all working perfectly. Um, so there we go. Um, I hope you guys are happy with that. Um, sounds really nice, this blimey boy. Yeah, it does. I'm really happy with it. Uh, Glue says he thinks he prefers the brass uh, plate more than the carbon fiber. That's probably fair. I think I prefer the carbon fiber. I think. It's more rigid, which I like. Um, the brass does sound good. If I want clacky, this is great. If I want um, a linear kind of, uh, it's more of a higher pitch sound, but it's a lot softer. It's not quite as loud. I think I'll go with the carbon fiber. My plan is when I get my version two, of the prototype is just to switch one of these builds into it. So I've got two versions, version one of the prototype and version two, and each one will have uh, be the same board basically, but with a different plate set up in it. 159 with the 1999 bits. Thank you very much, my dude. I really appreciate that, man. Blimey Boy says, What's the gasket made out of? And Tez is there. He says, Nice trial rubber. It is, yes. Uh, if anyone wants to know the compression ratios or anything like that, I can share them later on. Uh, Luke Helio says, Can we hear the most outer rows? Yeah, of course you can. Uh, let me unplug it because I don't want to end the stream. So, you just point out here the difference you can hear hearing here. The fact that the, the reason why all these sound the same is because they're all row one switches, uh, keycaps, so they've all got the same amount of space under them. So, if I tap here, they all sound broader the same. There's a slight difference in sound from row one to row two, and that's just because it's moving further into the plate, uh, but the cutout doesn't extend under there, so there's a little bit of variation there, closer to the rubber on this one. Uh, but the reason why they all sound the same in each row is because they're all the same profile keycap. These ones sound different because the keycap's different all the way down, so you're hearing the difference in sound resonation underneath the size of the keycap. So that's what you're hearing, that's why there's a difference in those. Um, Let's catch up. Uh, Grimble Design Master Materials. Yeah. Um, does it have N key rollover and anti ghosting? Uh, <laughs> it's QMK, so it's full N key rollover. Yes. Um, 
please enjoy your well-deserved vacation and keep yourself and your family safe during your travels. Thank you very much, dude. Yes, it will do. Uh, Luke Helio says, it sounds amazing. Yeah, I'm really happy with it. I, I genuinely, the whole process of design that Tez and I went through, we spent hours and hours and hours talking about this, uh, sharing designs. I drew up a ton of stuff. Tez kind of sent me designs and reference points and materials, and I sent him stuff back, and then we tried all sorts of different gaskets. I've got them all inside here. There's all sorts of stuff from cork to felt to nitrile rubber and all sorts of other bits and pieces. Um, so yeah, it's um, it's just one of those labors of love that we've worked through. I definitely think I prefer the carbon fiber plate personally. That's just, I think I prefer the sound of it and the feel of it, but I think this feels just as good. It's just a different type of sound and feel. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's what we're gonna go with. So that's the J01. This is the second build stream and the last build stream for them until I get the prototype review number two. If anyone is interested, do PM me on Discord. I will add you to the list. The numbers are getting high, so the chances are getting lower, but you have to be in it to get a slot. Um, and don't expect it to be particularly cheap. It's going to be quite an expensive board, but it is a prototype, so there are risks that are associated with that. Uh, there's no coverage like a normal group buy. It's a case of, you know, you join you accept the risk uh, that it's a prototype and that things may not turn out quite so well. Uh, that is one of the risks of prototyping stuff. Uh, but given the confidence that I have from this and the slightly changes that I've made and the manufacturer that I'm working with that's really good, I'm highly confident everything will work out just fine. I just need to get finalized quotes in and get some final prices. Um, Jay Jr. when? No, Jay Jr. Jay Jr. would be interesting. Jay's pregnant. Yeah, I look like I'm pregnant, but I'm not. Um, Jay Jr. would be amazing. Love smaller than... The 10 keyless. Uh, well, this is about the same size as the TKL, slightly wider than the 65. Um, you can see here next to the um, so the Zephyr, it's it's a couple of inches wider. The next board, the JO2, is in the works. Um, you might see that soon at some point. We'll see what we get to with that. But that is the stream done, guys. You've heard the sound test for just over two hours into the stream. My fingers are absolutely killing me. I'm going to go put them on ice uh, and pack my suitcase ready for my holidays uh, tomorrow. I'm going to be in Budapest. It does mean I won't be on Top Clack on Thursday. Um, Brian will be hosting the show himself. Uh, I will be back a week on Thursday. Um, and then there won't be a bill stream for me next week because I'm getting back off holiday on the Friday into the Saturday early hours in the morning um, so therefore I won't have time to prep for a build next weekend um, there will be a build the weekend after though so we're just taking a one week gap from top clap and a one week gap from build streams and then they'll all be back as normal so that's the plan um, Blue says thanks Jay you're the best no dude you are the best you are one of the people who got me completely into this hobby um, so thank you very much um, Neo Jonathan says have a wonderful uh, have an awesome trip in Budapest and you too because I know you're going just as I come back I know you're going so I hope you enjoy it as well um, it's a shame I couldn't hand the cable over to you in person that would be uh, amazing but if you ping me your address I'll get that sent out to you before I go if I can or if not as soon as I get back um, bringing the Team 50 yep yeah, Team 50 will be there I'll need it for the iPad on the uh, the plane I've got a couple of articles for top like I want to write up on the plane so that'll be uh, that'll be in use up there uh, great stream as always thank you very much enjoy your vacation I will do um, thank you, Anarchy, uh, uh, and thank you, Pass, uh, for the congratulations and the holiday wishes. Um, so, thank you to everyone who supported us. Thank you, Talisman, for all of the different bits and pieces you've submitted and donated and gifted subwise. Thank you, 159, for your bit donations. Uh, and I think it was ISO Returns as well who did some. I can't remember. Someone else did some bits as well. Uh, thank you for everyone else who subbed. Thank you, Glue, who's just subbed. Thank you, dude. Oh, thank you. Uh, Talisman Solutions gifted a, tub, a sub to, to, to Glue. Uh, so, thank you very much for that. Um, I'm going to call it a night, guys, uh, and I hope to see you again soon. Take care. See ya.